Let's go ahead and go on to the next word here. Et. There's our word et that we were talking about earlier. It's identifying the direct object of the verb, which happens to be the next word, which is ha, meaning the, and then adam. Adam. Adam means man, or more literally, red man, really. Red. It has the meaning of red. Adam, adama. All these words have the meaning of red. But it's understood as human. It's usually translated as man, but literally it means human. Be is the prefix that means in or with. And then the next word is salam. Salam is... don't have many shadows here, too many lights around, but you can see some shadows. But let's say I was standing here and had a light shine down. There was an, an image of me down here. Now that image represents me. It's a representation of me. It's a shadow. This word salam means a shadow, literally a shadow. It's translated as image, but an image is a shadow of, of something else. The last one is the suffix o, just meaning of him. Okay, so it's in his shadow. Let's put all of this together now and see if we see a different picture for this verse. And the powerful one filled the man with his shadow. Well, that's a little bit different. He maybe gives us a little bit different understanding rather than saying that he created man in his own image because that usually alludes to the idea that we look like God. If the text says that he created us in his image, then he just made carbon copies. That's what it means in the English or the way we would understand it. That's not what he's saying. First of all, the Hebrews aren't concerned with appearance. Remember that. They're concerned with function. We were created with his shadow. God took a representation of himself put it within us, not the outside, but the inside. We, inside of us, we are a copy of Yahweh. We are his representatives. Shemot 27, 20 verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. First of all, I want you to look at that word vain. In Hebrew, it's the word Shabbat. It's the same word used a few verses later, verb, a few verses later where it says, do not give a false witness. A false witness. That's the same word. Shiva means a false. Falseness. Falsely. Name. This is the Hebrew word shem. Is usually translated as name. Anybody hear the word ne or the, have heard of the word before neshema? In Genesis 2-7, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, the neshema. That word means breath. Uh, you'll notice the word shem within that. Shem is breath. Now, in our culture, breath is simply the exchange of air in the lungs. That's, that's breath. That's it. That's all. But in Hebrew thought, the breath is your character. It's who you are. Your breath is what makes you you. So when the Bible talks about the breath of God, it's not just talking about his breathing exercises. It's talking about his character. And we need to understand what Shem means from a Hebrew perspective because we've really gotten some things mixed up in the Bible and messed things up because of a misunderstanding of what Shem means. Let's put all that together. You shall not take the character of the Lord your God falsely. Now, that's totally different than the way I understood it when I was a kid. Because what this is saying is that if I say I'm a child of Yahweh and steal, I've broken that commandment because I've represented his character falsely. Right. Exactly. They represented his character falsely. If I'm saying I'm a follower of Yahweh, I'm his messenger, I'm going to teach you about Yahweh, but then I turn around and do something against his character, I've violated that command.